Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to treat a microwave oven for, say, roaches or ants. We get a lot of calls from customers and they'll say, hey, I've been seeing roaches coming out from my microwave. Sometimes they're coming out of a computer or a stereo system, a TV. All of these electrical components are very difficult to treat. We cannot spray them with liquids from a pump sprayer and we can't treat using a standard aerosol because they all have electrical components. And these electrical components like resistors and solid state boards, all of which are transmitting electricity, are subject to being damaged by the petroleum solvents and other mixtures inside the aerosols. So what options do we have for taking care of these sensitive appliances? We actually have a couple, and I'm going to go over that right now. So in this case, we're using a microwave, but the treatments would be similar, pretty much exactly the same with different areas that we're treating if we were, say, treating a computer or if we were treating a TV. And we may end up doing videos on those specific appliances if we get enough requests. But a microwave is certainly one that we hear about or get questions about all the time. So in this video, we're going to focus on the microwave and you can extrapolate the various techniques and use them on other appliances as well. Now, the first thing you want to do, of course, is remove any loose objects that might be in the microwave. As you can see, microwaves typically have food inside this container. This is the microwave holding area, and the radiation that is emitted is kept inside here. This is a sealed container. And if any insects were to get in here, they would not live they would be in trouble. So you don't have to worry about insects being able to thrive inside the microwave. Where they're going to be living is in the space between the housing and the actual microwave container. So the microwave container sits inside a housing and there's spaces in here. There's electronics in here, all of which will harbor the insects whether they're nesting or just using this as a staging area. So first let's look over the microwave and talk about the various areas that we want to treat. Inside here you can see there are definite holes, but as I stated before, insects can't live in here. And this is where the actual microwaves come into the holding container. So the microwave container itself, you don't have to treat. These door latch holes should be treated. There's a big space in here between the container and the actual electric board on the right and this is what holds these little hinges so that the doors remain nice and tight and insects do love going in here. If we turn the microwave sideways we don't see anything. On the back side we see a lot of ports of entry. All of these holes we also find compartment holes here, all of which are certainly spots that insects can come in and out of. Same thing here. We have a big area underneath the actual microwave holding tank. It's the housing base, and insects can definitely get in there. And then if we close the unit up and set it on its side, we can see underneath that we have a lot of areas for them to get in and out of the unit and the space that I've been talking about. So how can we treat this effectively? Well, we can't use liquids and we can't use aerosols. So what can we use that's going to do the job? Well, the obvious answer is a gel bait. And gel baits are definitely the most common that we use. Typically, they're pretty easy to apply to any appliance and they're not going to cause any damage. In this case, I've actually applied some to our refillable bait station. And the refillable bait station, it's a great tool to have when you're using any kind of gel bait. You can put some of the bait in the middle, and that's about all you would ever need. And then close it up, 
the bait is protected from dirt and you can place these underneath low profile appliances even this microwave you can place it in shelves or cabinets i should say in a shelf you can place it on windowsills pretty much any place and always see the bait which is nice because if the bait is consumed you'll know you need to replace it if it's not being touched you can simply pick the station up and relocate it to another area and maybe get some acceptance at this other area where before they were ignoring it in this case I'm using our Abathor gel and the reason why is because it's actually labeled for not only roaches but also ants so you're kinda tackling a, a couple of problems with one gel and there's not a lot of gels that can do that now if we were going to use this on the microwave as I said before we would want to get some of the bait right here in the latch so a little dab not nearly as big as that about half the size of what you see in the station that would be plenty for in here once we've done that you can close the unit up and yes there's going to be a little bit of gel getting on it that's fine leave it there leave it on these two spots all right that's fine once the problem is solved you can always clean that up now if we turn the unit to the back we can focus on these holes and a hole this big certainly can let insects get in and out and these smaller holes as well for ants but in this case let's just focus on the larger hole so we would put a little dab in here let's smear it on the edge a little bit here if we look up we see these vents and we can smear a little bit on the top of the vent I would do probably two or three of these I would do the two end ones and the middle one and then the same here so I would do here and I would do here so we've now treated the back of the unit if we check the far side we find this big gap between the microwave tank and the housing and this is a classic place for insects to get into so we would want to have some of the gel squeezed down in there you could definitely give it a little bit more since it would fall to the base and lay there without being seen so it's not going to be making a mess that cosmetically would be unsightly as far as the back of the unit you would once again want to focus on these little air vents so that means every two or three you would want to put a little dab put a little down here a little down here you would want to put some here here down here and this hole looks big enough to put a little dab and then just to be safe and complete we want to make sure we get the top of the unit so if you look you have these same vents here so a little dab here and here and you're good to go so at this point you can consider this unit properly treated if we were using the abathor gel and wanted to do nothing but bait the unit now the second option we have for treating a microwave is actually using our mini mister and some biothor as you know the mini mister is a spray that we recently introduced to our line and if you mix up some biothor you can surface spray most all the exterior sides of this unit and that will have a big impact on any insects that are coming out the mini mister puts out a very fine mist so it's not going to damage anything and it's going to lay on the surface really well because it's a mist so as you probably realize trying to take a standard pump sprayer and spraying the back of this would just be a nightmare I mean first the liquid would cause damage and it would just all drip off but using the mini mister we can get a light pattern on here that would do its job it would target the insects that are coming out of these vents and what's great about the mini mister is that you can do this very very quickly so if you have one you're in business obviously you need some bithor as well but for roaches and ants we recommend the bithor and it's a great product to be using around the exterior of the home and inside on baseboards carpets etc 
but also on the exterior surfaces of appliances, starting in this corner, up to the top, around the edge, and then across the back. So using the mini mister, I'm about a foot and a half, two feet away, and watch how fast this goes. It's now spraying, I've got the top, I've got the side, bottom, and the middle. So I have officially put the Bythor on the entire back of this unit, and it's now protected. I don't have to get any inside. If the insects come out, they're gonna get some of this on them. On the left side of the unit, when you're looking from the front, we had these vents that we also showed we could put the gel bait in. But in this case, we could once again, take the mini mist to turn it on for a second and get a little bit of spray in there. And you can see it's dripped a little bit, but that's okay. Let it sit, let it dry, and that surface area will have a big impact on any roaches or ants that might be nesting in here. Now in the back of the unit, same pattern. We're gonna go across and get this done. Less than five seconds is all it's gonna take. So I'm about two feet away, gonna turn it on. And that's it. So we have officially treated the microwave. And after doing this, you need to let it sit before you start using it again. We want it to dry, so give it a good hour of sitting and the unit will be ready to go. Most people have a specific spot where they keep their microwave up on a shelf or inside a little compartment, and that's great. Let it sit in that area. Try not to handle the exterior of it. Certainly don't clean it for at least a week. Let the Bythor do its thing. Once it's applied on the outside, and the same is true with the Abathor, once the gel is applied on the outside, you cannot be using any kind of cleaner on the unit. It will just contaminate the bait. It will wipe away the Bythor. And in the end, you'll have nothing left to control the insects. So after doing a treatment, make sure that the unit sits for about an hour before you start using it. And then once you have the treatment in place and you're using the unit, retreat if you're still seeing insects a week later. But in general, either of these options will get rid of the pests within a very short period of time, generally about five to seven days. The only exception, of course, is if there are egg sacs in here and you see a hatching egg sac surge, say three or four weeks after you've done your treating and you haven't seen any, well, that means you're gonna need to do another treatment. So egg sacs, because they're impervious to chemical and they don't eat the gel bait, if they're hatching from a microwave, you will need to do a follow-up treatment. But if there's only a few rogue insects in here and you do the treatment, particularly with the Bythor, it will take care of them in two or three days. And within five or seven days, you're not going to see anything crawling around the microwave. And you can then forget about it. The problem is solved. So thanks for watching my How to Treat a Microwave Oven for Roaches or Ants from Bug Spray dot com